Oh, Ethan, I see you at the fringes. Did you find your way back to us tonight? I bet you had fun roaming around, but it's getting later and I don't want you to drift too far away. How about a scary tale to capture your attention? Uh, I have one in my bag just for you. Okay, listeners, Ethan appreciates stories with a bit of silly grossness, so don't be alarmed. In fact, play along. Let's unwrap this special candy that may or may not make you burp when you eat it. <laughs> Pardon me. It's natural. Jennifer Winters wrote this story about a pair of cousins and a pair of imaginary friends. It's performed by Peter Lewis, Selena Marti, and Erin Lillis, and soundscaped by Erin Lillis as well. If you listen and believe hard enough, you might just meet Bloody Mary and Bloody Marvin. The sound of Alex and his cousin Rudy jumping on the trampoline was the only thing breaking the silence of the multi-colored autumn afternoon. Newly fallen leaves and acorns bounced up and down as the boys maintained their rhythm, careful to alternate jumps. Alex's feet would slap on the trampoline and a squeak of its springs shot him upward. Then Rudy's feet would smack onto the big black mass of the trampoline's pad. After a while, the boys got bored. The bouncing had made them both feel a little barfy. And so they lay on their backs on the trampoline, wiggling so as to get the acorns out from under their backs. The clouds in the sky were turning a reddish sunset gold. Rudy yawned. Alex decided that it was time to speak. So, you're my cousin? Yep. Rudy's reply was short. Neither said a word for a few more moments. My mom's gonna come on Monday. Alex ventured, feeling awkward, like a poot in church. She's trying to sell her books in Memphis. Yep. Rudy was now flicking leaves and acorns with his fingers. She's doing a talk for people at the convention about writing. Then she'll set up a table to sell her books. She's hoping to sell enough to pay for the trip. I'm talking too much, Alex thought. So he stopped. Rudy didn't say anything for a moment. Then he started uh, reciting the ABCs. A. B. Alex just lay there, wondering why his eight-year-old cousin would feel the need to practice the alphabet. A. Alex, who was nine, wondered if kids out here in the sticks didn't have anything better to do than recite their letters. G. Then Alex realized that Rudy wasn't saying the letters with his voice, but with something much more impressive. Why? The. When Rudy finished, Alex was sitting up and staring at him, open-mouthed. Dude! He said. You burped the whole thing! Rudy just smiled and climbed down from the trampoline, with Alex close behind. So? Rudy said. What does your mom write? Alex proudly replied. Horror stories! She has three or four collections of short stories and one novel. They're messed up, man. Rudy led the way to the house. My mom said that your mom used to make up stories when they were little. They were supposedly scary. Alex didn't like how Rudy had said, supposedly. Well, if my mom made them up, they were scary. Rudy only murmured under his breath as they entered the house. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, scary for babies. The house was old, with creaky wood floors. The kitchen and bathrooms were all redone, modern and nice, but the windows were still old and too small, and the rooms of the house were always dark in the corners. A carry-out pizza sat on the kitchen counter along with a bottle of soda. Alex saw it and decided to try a different method of breaking the ice with his cousin. 
Hey, let's drink that soda and have a burping contest. Rudy smiled in approval and respect and grabbed two red plastic cups out of the pantry. A few minutes later, the boys were laughing and burping on cue. <laughs> uh, uh. At one point, Alex laughed too hard with a mouthful of soda, and it came shooting out of his left nostril. (laughs) Rudy's eyes went wide with admiration. Epic! Alex grinned proudly as he wiped the soda off of his upper lip. The cousins then tore into the pizza, each trying to outdo the other with their disgusting eating methods. The house was quiet. Rudy's mom and dad were out for the night at their weekly ballroom dancing class. Rudy's teenage sister was supposed to be watching the boys, but the only thing she was watching was stupid videos on her computer. She came out once to grab a piece of pizza, then quickly disappeared back into her room. Try to keep it down, losers. The door slamming shut. Rudy spoke through a mouthful of pizza. Your mom said right about Bloody Mary. Who? Alex said, careful to chew with his mouth open so that Rudy could get a clear view of the mushed up mess. Rudy shoved more pizza into his mouth, even though the last bite was still there. Bloody Mary and Bloody Marvin. Bloody Mary? Alex replied. Isn't she like a ghost that shows up in the mirror if you say her name a bunch of times? Rudy shook his head, swallowing. No, that's just like a game or something. Bloody Mary and Bloody Marvin used to be our mom's imaginary friends. Then, they were my imaginary friends. But now... Rudy was reaching for another piece of pizza. Alex cleared his throat to urge his cousin to finish his sentence. Rudy grinned wide before taking a big bite. But now... They're real! Alex looked around the room. He didn't like the dark shadows in the corners or the darkness that filled the hallway that led to the bathroom and bedrooms. Real? He asked. Like, how? Well... Rudy said, hopping down off of his stool and grabbing another paper plate off of the stack by the pizza box. Our moms believed in them so much that they were almost real. But then, when I started believing in them, I believed in them so hard that that they did get real. Rudy took a couple of pizza slices out of the box and placed them on the plate. They live in the attic. They only come out when Mom and Dad are gone. He then grabbed two more of the red plastic cups and poured soda into them. Alex suddenly didn't feel hungry anymore. He couldn't stop looking into the dark shadows that filled every corner of the room. They need higher wattage light bulbs, he thought. Rudy continued to speak. I guess it's wrong to say that they live in the attic, because they aren't really alive. Especially Marvin. Mary gets mad at him a lot. When she does, she pulls his head off and puts it in that big vase at the end of the hall. After a while, he'll come down from there. Rudy nodded towards the ceiling where the door to the attic was fixed. And he'll feel around until he finds it and puts it back on. His head, that is. Alex didn't want to hear anymore. He jumped up. I'm going to the bathroom. He looked into the shadows of the hallway, groping until he found the light switch and flipped it on. The light helped a bit. But he wasn't happy to see the large, ornamental vase at the end of the hall. He held his breath and practically ran down the hall into the bathroom. The last door on the right. Careful not to look into the big vase as he opened and closed the door. After he did his business, Alex hesitated, dreading what he might see when he opened the bathroom door. She puts his head in that big vase at the end of the hall. Glad that he'd already peed, Alex slowly pulled the door open and stepped out into the hall, deliberately turning his head and body away from the vase. Hey, you two up there! 
Rudy's voice floated from the kitchen in a too loud whisper. Come and get your food before Mom and Dad get home. Alex froze, wanting to believe that his cousin was pranking him, but feeling 99% sure that he wasn't. And Bloody Marvin? Rudy said. If Bloody Mary's taking your head again, you know where to find it. Alex really needed the bathroom again, but he couldn't move. He wanted to call out for his other cousin, Rudy's big sister, but he couldn't remember her name. Slowly, he opened his eyes, feeling his head turn towards the vase on the floor next to him. He didn't want to look inside. He had to look inside. As Alex leaned over to peer inside the vase, he heard the unoiled hinges of the attic door creaking open. Something that sounded like big, bare feet hit the floor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.